Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today in Kerbal Space Program, we are going to perform an experiment. We have two identical rockets here. They are based around solid rocket boosters with fins. They're identical except for one thing. The one on the left has a nose cone. Now, in normal Kerbal Space Program, the nose cone will add weight, and that one will lag behind. However, when I let them go, it initially starts off slower, but very quickly it starts to take the lead, accelerating faster and faster than its twin, until it is in fact going upwards like a rocket, so to speak. What has happened? Well, I have installed Ferrum Aerospace Research's mod that basically redoes the entire aerodynamic system in Kerbal Space Program, and it is fantastic. I don't use it myself much because, or I haven't used it much because you basically need to overwrite your whole directory, it changes everything, but it is so much better than the aerodynamic system with the game that it is worth, worth having almost by default. So uh, this is one of the aircraft that comes with it, it lets you, you know, you can see that it flies a whole lot nicer, it's actually, you see the G-loading jumping up and down. Uh, in Kerbal Space Program, the default version, it's very hard to get that kind of loading. Uh, you know, the wings in this really catch the air a whole lot better. And uh, if you're not careful, it is in fact possible to exceed the limits of your st structural limits of your aircraft. And yes, you then end up with bits falling off. And shortly after, your aircraft starts to plummet back to the planet without any real way to control it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's some pilots out there saying, Oh, you know, what you needed to do was pump the fuel around and, you know, <laughs> point the nose in such a way, but I can't fly it. Jebediah was not in that flight, so they were lost. Yes. But uh, the tail section survived pretty nicely, or it flew pretty nicely. We should have put the cockpit up there, I think. You know, then the pilots could have flown that into the ground with a, at least a little more control. There we go. Bang! Off it flies. The, the wings still continue on their merry way like standard Kerbal Space Program. In standard Kerbal Space Program, the mass is the only really important thing. The mass of the parts gets multiplied by the drag parameter, and as the mass of the part decreases, the drag decreases, which means that a full fuel tank and an empty fuel tank have the same drag parameters or drag force. So they all fall together. It's not particularly accurate. It's good enough for rockets most of the time, but it certainly doesn't work with planes. And you know, at some point I expect we will see an improved model, but until we get around to it, there we go, I'm watching this. I'm <laughs> making this thing spin and stall for fun. But uh, I recover, not bad. Yeah, this one is a hypersonic aircraft, which is bundled with the with the, the package. There's several aircraft with it and there are a whole lot, I mean they've obviously put a lot of work into them because there's a lot more things to tweak on these. If you look on the right I have this flight assistance system, this is built in. It's kind of like ASAS or the avionics except you can tweak all the parameters and turn on and off individual controls. It's good to have and it also has a whole lot of other instrumentation to give you feedback. Obviously what I'm doing here is I'm flying up really high and generating a flame out, an asymmetric flame out. So now I am in a crazy uncontrollable spin and the next thing I want to do is try to figure out how to recover from it. So cut my engine power to essentially zero and I'm going to try and get the, the nose pointing forwards. I mean the reason I cut the power right now is because you know, at this point we'll randomly have the engines giving me power and not. They will be exaggerating the spin. I've obviously accelerated time up, but I'm basically trying to get the nose forward so that the wings bite into the air and give me some control again. That may not be possible. If I can't get that fixed, I will basically plummet into the ground uh, spinning wildly. So yeah, firing up the engines now to try and get some force. And you see I'm almost starting to loiter in the right direction. And there, I think I've got some control. Now it's just a question of getting out of the dive towards the ground or towards the, the surface of the, the sea before I can claim to have rescued myself. And Doncott has indeed done himself proud. 
escape from that spinning aircraft of doom. But I'm sure his heart is, <laughs> his nerves are a little racked after that. So uh, yeah, let's go and land this over here. That looks like a kind of flat area. And skipping forward some boring things. You see how well this flies. I'm, I'm just gliding this in basically. Uh, and 127 meters per second here. And it's just, I'm going uphill, so I guess I'm being very careful. Oh, there goes the engines. That's okay, we're just landing it. We don't need to take off again. Besides, we have four other engines if we if we care. Let's try a little harder. Oh, got it on the ground. Brakes, no brakes. Try to use the brakes here without, oh, no, it's going to roll. Oh, airborne again, airborne, oh. <laughs> you see, this is why you should try and land on a flat surface. <laughs> Landing on hills is not something that aircraft are designed to do. Oh, there, we're losing a wing, and once we lose the wing, everything goes wrong. The asymmetric lift just totally kicks in. Uh, anyway, yeah, so in the building, in the hangar, you have a whole lot of extra in information. You know, you can basically create these um, charts to do static analysis on the way you, you behave. You're sweeping your angle of attack or sweeping, sweeping your velocity. You can, you basically set up flight conditions and sim uh, simulate everything and it'll tell you all these numbers, which I will honestly tell you, I don't actually know what all these numbers mean. I have a pretty good idea what they mean, but I don't honestly know off the top of my head what they mean. So again, you know, you can also do simulation of uh, oscillations and things like this. This is great if you understand that stuff, and I endeavor to understand this stuff at some point, but right now, I am just going to try flying this plane because I don't think you want to hear me try to figure out aerospace engineering right now. Uh, <laughs> You also notice you can get this nice flight data display on the side that'll tell you all these numbers, including the air requirements met. Oh, yeah. Um, there goes the tailplane, and without the tailplane I can't keep the nose up, and the plane just disintegrates, basically. Yeah, the air requirements met is a really nice display. It tells you how close you are to running out of fuel. Yeah, structural failures can occur... Um, on re-entry as well, this is an example of a space plane that, due to bad planning, is descending through the atmosphere rather too quickly. And you see very quickly, look at the G's shooting up 15, and then the whole thing just falls apart. Uh, that is entirely possible. In fact, it's <laughs> probably the first, well, I mean, you, that was previously possible, but it was very, very hard to generate a situation where you would have your spacecraft break up. It is a whole lot easier with this proper aerodynamics setup. It just doesn't have heating. They do also include some great models that resemble uh, real-life aircraft. This is their version of the SR-71 Blackbird, which you remember I might have mentioned. Uh, I have not taken this up to ridiculous high speeds and you know torn it apart with a, a flat spin. In fact, I didn't get very far with this. I kind of took off into the air and enjoyed how it flew, and then I had to go and do family stuff. But it, it, it you know, there's the planes that come with it are excellent. One of the things to be aware is that in the hangar, there's so many things you can change, and uh, not all the flaps or control surfaces will work until you tell them. Oh, yeah! <laughs> this is... This is one of the example ones. Uh, notice that uh, as I'm using the the vertical controls, that the the whole body is flexing back and forth. But actually, the thing flies pretty well. Notice the G meter is up around seven Gs as I'm doing these turns. That you could never get the G meter that high using the wings set up in standard KSP. This is, but this is supposed to be something like a U2, I guess. But actually, it flies really well. <laughs> it has a bit of problem with a uh, yaw control. Like, if you try to use the yaw, it becomes very unstable, and you can spin it out, actually, under the, the right situation. But uh, Jebediah, he doesn't care. Look, we're going to do a nice roll here. Then come over the top. What else can we do? Well, let's uh, let's try rolling over. 
Yes, let's try doing an outside loop. Notice those negative Gs. Jebediah is a true superhero because normal people would red out at that point. Most people red out at about minus three Gs, but he was clearly handling minus nine there. Yeah, not all the planes that come with it are particularly well designed. There's this um, interesting one. Oh yeah, which also loses its tailplane. Uh, I wonder if I can fly it with those canards. Uh, let me see. What way am I going? Let's try pointing it, pointing it. No, no. Yeah, there's some really big aircraft in there. There is a passenger airliner. In fact, you might have seen it in the the video where I was dropping the rods from God. That was the target. You probably saw it for half a millisecond before it collided with the terrain as the <laughs> as the game uh, tried to figure out where it should be. Well, this is flying, but not really flying particularly. It seems to want to fly upside down. Not sure what to do about that. Uh, I can't remember what this one is called, but it's not bad. The, they include, you know, gliders. They include a whole bunch of Delta Wing, super fast aircraft. There's a couple of space planes, which, you know, you have to look at the action group set up to manage to make them fly. But once you get them flying, they're they're excellent. <laughs> this one is... Look, I've got the landing gear out, being rather hopeful there. Maybe I can land this thing. Nope, it's flipped upside down. I need landing gear on its roof. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, this is Ferrum Aerospace Research Technologies. No, wait, not technologies, because that would be the acronym FART. Oh, yeah, I like the way that it drops an L shape down there to indicate I am a loser. Well, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.